here pocket jacks facing a two big blind bet i'm just gonna go for a thin value raise now this is a bit disrespectful to my opponent i think but really queen should be betting bigger for him so i do not think he has anything Hey everyone, this is Uri for Gorilla Poker. Today's gonna be another live play. I'm gonna do it at 1KNL today just for fun. Now, I wanted to mention I always talk about in the low, lower stakes videos, bluffing a lot and folding a lot. And even though this is 1KNL, these are not nosebleed level players. They still make a bunch of mistakes and they're still generally in the same direction, but they are more technically proficient. So, there are spots where you want to bluff a lot and there are spots where you want to fold a lot you just have to be a lot more nuanced about understanding the situation a lot more spots i'm gonna kind of know less what i'm doing and, and be forced to just play technically sound poker which is always something you have at the base of whatever you're doing what we call fundamentally sound poker if you guys have watched the course on the site so let's get into it have some fun as always Please excuse any pre-flop inaccuracies. They're always going to be small because I've studied the solutions just not too much lately. Here, I think 7-8 should sometimes bluff. Probably not every time. Probably good to overdo it if I had to guess, despite this being one canna. Okay, so this goes check, check. Ace, I am going to check 7-8. I'm, I'm going to bet. Actually, check all. 8-5 of clubs, and when the ace turns, you want to be fairly polarized with stabbing. And either check raise or go really big, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I think just check falling this hand is fine. And 6-5 suited, not a, a high frequency 3-bet. I think this is a very, very low frequency 3-bet small blind versus button. Oh, this is so much slower paced than the, the Zoom games, so we're, we're actually going to have time to to think and go through decisions. So heads up, pocket fours, jack eight, deuce board, relatively good board for the preflop raiser. That means you can go for a range bet strat. Of course, you definitely don't have to. It's a range bet strats tend to be slightly over doing the betting, but but they still tend to be very effective. Again, more effective the lower down in stakes you go. And we have lost our opponent, but maybe we'll find a new one. And meanwhile, let's, I'll try to kind of gather information on all the players. 3xing the button with a 48 big blind stack is not a good technical race size. So very likely some sort of recreational or live player. Uh, so I'll color code red. Interesting board BVB. I think I will start out by checking pocket eights, but kind of anything you do with a set is correct. This is something I talk about in the deception chapter of the red line course, kind of what, which line every hand wants to go into. And actually what you see is that when you're against a good player, specifically sets when you're out of position, actually often go and kind of defend all of your other ranges so they will sometimes check raise sometimes check hole sometimes bet small sometimes bet big kind of do a little bit of everything kind of a weird thing to say you know you can do anything with this hand of of course if i know something about my opponent like how aggressive he is or how thin he likes to bet or how he perceives me i'll have a very preferred line in a vacuum you won't you want all the lines will be okay here and I think we definitely want to value bet. For him to bet big and then check back, probably has quite a lot of air, maybe made a pair. I think we just bet something big. Probably get like one of the spots where you just get a million faults. Like there's when the in position player stabs big to check back turn he's just gonna fold river a lot like there's not too much you can do about it again barring having info if i had some information about the guy maybe i would you know check to let him bluff because he doesn't know how to give up notes that i have on people are, are probably roughly a, a year old or so i think i haven't played one knl high volume since november of last year yeah, everything has to be taken with a grain of salt. People's games change in, in that time period. 
Here this is like a too loose open, but if we have a suspected recreation on a big blind, it's fine to open a bit looser. Uh, plus we're recording a video, so it's fun to, to have some action going on. Yeah, where, where's uh, the third table? I'll throw in two 500 tables and then the pace should give up. Oh wow, so we have... Uh, Okay. Okay. So we'll see if we catch one quickly. Uh, here, king five of hearts. Ah, it, it's if if we play the spot with cold calls, it it probably almost makes it. But I I don't tend to play cold calls there. Oh, we actually got the one k table running. So we'll have four tables. And immediately a limp, uh, which is fine to do heads up, but again, tends to coincide with being a recreational. So yeah, the reason I color code recreational players red, and this is something all of you guys should obviously do when you're playing, is that knowing who the recreationals are should affect your pre-flop strategy. Right, we have the the GTO preflop, and there you go. You you guys see the three X, which is also a, a trademark size for someone who who's not a professional player. One of the things that recreationals tend to do is they they leak money in a bunch of ways. They they're generally not three betting enough. They are called calling a bit too much, and 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 post flop they they make various types of mistakes. E each one is different, but they will just be making what I call fundamental mistakes over and over and over again. So what most people tend to do is when there is a recreational at the table, they will widen the ranges that they play to reflect the fact that, uh, you know, probably when you play this guy, your hands are going to overperform in almost every situation. Of course, this doesn't apply for everyone. So for example, let's say that you're playing against someone who is very, very aggressive. Uh, so he's an aggressive recreational, he's not very good about it, he's not very nuanced about it, but, you know, he, he does his best. You may, maybe this guy is that archetype, like he's 3-betting too small, but he 3-bets a lot. So in, in this sense, you might actually not do too well playing wide ranges against him because he's very, very aggressive. But without... Oh, wow, look at this. 40 big blind 4-bet. So th th this is a very non-standard size, and just by the fact that this guy calls the 4-bet, you can see he's probably a, a very, very high VPIP player, and we'll, we'll see what happens soon enough. Oh, he actually has pocket queens. Okay. I mean, you should still probably shove. Okay, I was expecting to see, like, queen 10 suited or something and, and getting excited for a second there. Here, a ten of diamonds is actually fairly close. Uh, I think I would continue ace jack. Of course, I'd continue with a spade or a heart. Here, I will actually just three bet. And yeah, I think I'm gonna make kind of a, a tight fold. This is very, very close spot. A lot of, uh, if you guys are, are watching my hand history reviews, I always often talk about thresholds. Like, these are the types of mistakes you can make. Maybe you folded ace 10 and you should have called. Maybe you called and you should have folded. Definitely a kind of mistake that's very easy to make. Maybe this jack deuce of hearts. Maybe the threshold is jack 3. So the more kind of practiced you are, the more you will get those correct. Here, king high board tends to be very good for the raiser. Same as here with pocket jacks. Jack Deuce of Hearts is kind of semi backdoorish, so it is actually okay to just go ahead and bluff raise. And, and because it's an ace high board, actually want to go pretty big when you do that. This might might be a bit loose. Uh, King Jack facing a check raise never ever fold, always call. And Jack's uh, on a queen turn, I think, makes sense to check back. And yeah, I, I was already running through my head. I always try to plan ahead. Like, am I going to stack off? no matter what, and I think the answer is yes, like unless the board changes, this hand has to stack off. Here pocket jacks facing a two big blind bet, I'm just gonna go for a thin value raise. Now, this is a bit disrespectful to my opponent, I think, but really queen should be betting bigger for him, so I do not think he has anything. King jack here, I'm gonna just bet. 
don't think there's much merit in slow playing this hand here. And very cool line for my opponent. Bet two big blinds get raised small in open shot. It's one of those spots where you really want to have some information about the player to make a decision because you know this is a technically good size. It makes sense for some hands. Maybe he has one of them. Who knows? Then again, you know, given my line, I am probably never, ever, ever calling. So th there is that. Now, as a default, I'm going to fold, but take a note and kind of for next time, this guy is capable of betting two big blinds and then shoving. And if, if he does this often, I'll, I'll look him up at some point. Bet two big blinds, river, shove over, small, raise when I'm capped. So this is a spot, you know, obviously my hand pocket jack should never ever be calling there. Question is, do you ever want to call anything? Depends on, like, is this guy doing those kind of plays more than once in a blue moon? Because it's very rare. I, I actually cannot remember the last time I've seen a play like that. Looks like this table broke. So I'm going to actually swap tables. I'll leave this one rather than playing heads up. Play here. I will squeeze this hand. And fishy fish guy just got stacked. So again, depending on on whether he's a professional or a recreational, some guys after they just get stacked, and actually everyone after they just get stacked, they you know it, it's a bit tilting to to get stacked. So yeah, you, you might see some extra spew in this kind of situation from people, but I think that's all right. Here, I think it's actually a good card to check shop Queen Jack of Diamonds on. And this is mixed, we will probably call it most of the time. So I will check. Presumably, if he bets Queen 10, Jack 10, bluffs, whatever, and, and I shove and he falls, that's pretty good. And yeah, we have really good equity. So this is one of the ways to play this hand. You can bet, you can check raise. Sometimes you can even check all. That's not completely out of line either. So here we go. Check all, check, check. Uh, 10 kickers. Pro probably worth a bet. Probably worth. No, not a very big one, I would assume. Yeah, if he's thinking, I probably really hope he falls. If he's thinking, presumably has a pair. I don't think he's supposed to fold many of his pairs, but definitely some of them. Okay. Deuces he should have folded. Deuces is a hand that's not good enough to call, but. Yeah, like 61% for him is, is not what we call the best case scenario, but good call, good call. If we're taking a note, you might want to say like the guy's a bit stationy or something like that, but he, he just got stacked the previous hand. So I, I don't know if I really want to judge his play based on that hand. I actually would, would treat it more like an anomaly. Uh, here, King 10 of clubs, because it's BVB, there's, there's actually no need to keep betting. That goes for the river. Uh, here, I'm going to turn this hand into a bluff. Oh, it could show down, but I think it's a nice hand to bluff with. Yeah, we'll check King 10. Not win very often, but the hand is good enough to show down. And here with Ace of Spades Deuce, uh, we have to decide whether or not we want to bluff the river. I I think it's a fairly good spot and a fairly good hand, so I will just go ahead and do it. Yeah, think, think, just go all in. And we get snap called by King9. Always when you see someone call you, uh, you have to look at the full situation. Here, like, did anything unexpected happen? Uh, here, no, no, not really. When, like, straight comes in and flush comes in, King9 is a check call. If he has a boat, obviously he's calling river, so. Uh, this hand and, and, and the hand I'm showing down doesn't indicate anything special in terms of my strategy because, you know, I'm just going for a big bluff with a nut blocker. So it's really a, a situation where nothing too special happened. Like some money changed hands. Uh, I think we both played fine. And there there's not too much to, to read into the situation. Had he called me with deuces like the other guy, then I'd be like, oh, okay. This is, like we said, uh, maybe stationy. Mm -hmm. 
you're facing a donk bet with a6. Uh, what do we know about this guy? It's the pocket queen's hand. So I, I think this is raise or fold with a6. It, it's not good enough to call, so I, I will actually just fold. Here we see a smaller side 3 bet, but it's okay to do this from the small blind. It's not a big deal. When you see ace queen 5, you always have to remember the position. So were I button, my relative hand strength is a lot higher than it is in this situation. In this situation, for sure I'm calling flop, but the decent chance I will just fall to a turn barrel uh, on improved like the 3. Uh, you know, this is not very high up in my range. But yeah, let, let's see what happens. Uh, so we face a big turn bet. Like I'm saying, like probably need to call your aces. I don't know that you need to call king queen every single time. So I might be making a small mistake here, but I'm not sure. I think I will again go ahead and fold. Pocket force goes check check. We have a card that is good for my range because it's a low card. That means I could start stabbing, but you don't have to. We can also wait. Force is a very very medium strength hand. Here king jack off. Very very borderline, but I think it's okay. Force will of course call on the eight. We'll check the river, and this is going to always three bet. Okay. So here, just the fact that this guy donk bet hot multiway, fairly important, because that means probably when he checks, he's fairly weak. Six, seven suited, probably mix squeeze and call or call this time. I think fours is okay. It's it's okay for the situation. It's a run out where he doesn't have too many value bets, but then it's also a run out where lots of people just give up on bluffs. So. Oh, either way, I think I end up folding this time. And this is really a spot where you want to know the player. Like, is he going to be afraid to, to bluff the 7? Because I have, I presumably hit that card a lot. Or is he just always firing twice? I think a lot of people would actually be a bit afraid to bluff the 7. Here, Ace Jack Deuce can bet or check King Jack. I think we'll, we'll start out checking and take it from there. And now that we improve to the King and actually beat top pairs, I think it's it's a really nice spot. You know, lots of people actually check back the Ace in, in Jojo Lin's shoes. I think it is a nice spot to start betting huge. Threes here I will call with the recreational here. And yeah, you, you guys saw we, we got snap called. Now, maybe has diamonds, maybe has an Ace, but either way. Um, I think the play for me is to shop. Yeah, it seems more like diamonds given the timing. So here, checked around on the flop. Threes is just a turn check for the most part. Not, not too much else to do with it. Maggie Potts. I'm, I'm a slight non-believer. I, I would probably have, have continued if uh, the other guy hadn't. Reason I'm a non-believer is partly that this guy donk bet, and second, we both look weak and he's potting. So I'm I'm very suspicious about what's going on here. Here, queen deuce. I bet got called, and this guy bets small. I would tend to say we probably don't have much. I have a big draw, so I'm gonna turn it into a bluff. And we need to wrap up the video soon. So good good hands to finish with, I think. I just have to see what happens on the top right table. I, I have a feeling Maggie's going to have like diamonds or 7-9 or 6-7 or something like that. If I have threes here, I, I click call very, very quickly. But yeah, let's see how wrong I am. So he has, yeah, ace three, kind of like I suspected. Hopefully situation makes sense. Like I would snap call jack eight. Like the second you call a turn, you have to know the river bet is coming. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. If you haven't, check out the Gorilla Poker website where we have GTO preflop ranges. Very, very important for all of the stuff that's going on here. They save you just a ton of mental energy, right? When you're playing preflop and you kind of know what's going on. We have a course about how to improve your red line where we talk about a bunch of cool things. Deception, bet sizing, over bets, lots of stuff that, that you guys can see. Highly recommend you check those out. Like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.